Hi, welcome to PR Tech Talk. This is the second episode on the topic Sager RTT. In the first episode, we installed Sager RTT and created a project that sent data from the project to the terminal. That is what you normally get with this traditional semi-hosting printf. But with Sager RTT you also get more possibility, like multiple debug windows, for example one window for data and status and another for errors. In this episode I will make a project that uses the bidirectional feature. Hope this sounds useful and if so please subscribe and like and if you also want to get notified when I release a new video then hit the bell icon. Okay, so this is where approximately where we left off in the first episode. So we will build upon this project and uh, develop it a bit more. We start by opening the project and opening the source folder and our main file, which is the hell entry C file. Here we have the project that we created in the last time. We will modify it a bit. We will keep the include files, uh, but we will need to include also for this project a small integer. Uh, so I have done something like that. So a static integer, we call it R. We get onto to do and we remove the code that we just entered here. So I have now pasted a small example from the example list from the Sega RTT files. So what it does, it waits for an input from the terminal and then just write that value back to the terminal and increment it. And it goes round and round. So we'll try to build this one. And we did get zero warnings and we will just take a short look at the map file to see if that was changed. And we search for the segger underscore rtt. And it was changed. So we see here, now it's 49c instead. So we need to update that. Connect. And we enter that 49c instead. We debug the project. Okay, so now the debug have put in a whole state and we will now just start it and the code is running. And we see on the terminal, it says a Sega real time terminal sample. And down here we have an input window where we can enter something and we can enter, for instance, a small a. And whenever I write something in, in this window, uh, it says it sent one byte and it echoes up here in the terminal. So it means that we can actually send information from the terminal input here to the processor and then it echoes it back. So we have a, a two-way communication here. So we can build upon this project now. So we do like this, the increment of the variable R, we delete that one. So we start with making a switch. And in the last episode, we learned that control space gives us some uh, features from the eSquare Studio, but you can also is also get some uh, code from it. So if we do, do like this, this is already done for us. So we get the small uh, sample on, on the switch statement here. So the switch and it asks for the key and I suggest we use the integer r that we already have here. And then we ask for the value and I would like to toggle an LED. That is my favorite thing to do. So I'm using if we have an uh, one. And if we have a one, 
we can put some output. We can have the printf. And the buffer index is zero. So there is the first line, Sega print, Sega RTT print F buffer zero, and the message is space led on and new line and return. Now we also want like to have a LED toggle on and off. So we can go with the developer resistance, HAL common IO and we can look for the uh, pin write function. And the status is for error handling and we don't use that in this small project. So we just continue here and the pin is LED free. And the status is BSP, IO control space, level high. And we add another case, so we just copy this one. So in case we get to zero, we write the text led off. And we put the status on the LED to low. And under default, I have prepared some code that is done. So, so now we made some changes to the code. Whenever we hit the R, we output it again on the terminal. And on the switch case, we also evaluate if it's a one or a zero or if it's something else. If it's something else than one or zero, we put all the text down here. But if it's a one, we put the text, it's led on and we turn on the LED. And if it's a zero that we receive, we send out the text led off and we also put on off the LED. So we now try to build this project. Hope there is no errors. There were no errors. Uh, we just verify if there have been any changes to the um, to the address since we added all this code. No, it's still 49C. Great. So we debug. The code is running and we get greeted with this Sega real time terminal sample. So now if I go down to this window here and I put one, it says led on. If I put zero, it says led off. And if I put, for instance, something else than a one and a zero, then I, like an F, it says wrong input, number zero or one allowed. Please try again. Okay, so now we also have the board, EKRA4M3 board also in the picture here. When I now in the input window put one, you see there is an, a red LED starting to light up. And if I now then hit zero, the LED turns off. And if I push something else, I get the information on the terminal that it's the wrong input. So this was the end of the episode two of the Sega RTT. We have only scraped on the surface of all the possibilities that the Sega RTT offers you. So please feel free to uh, evaluate that on your own hand. But now I think at least you got the first start to uh, look at it. And also on the Sega side, there is a lot of material that you can dig into on your own. Hope you liked the video and you learned something and if you did as usual please like and subscribe and if you want to have notifications when there is new videos released just hit the bell icon as well. Stay safe and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!